Hello there kitties! I'm Kagi, the vacuum tube witch. What I found is a... Uh, a thing of beauty and a joy forever that uh, comes from... Uh, before the Second World War, it's a... Uh, wall mount telephone, uh, like you see here, it is... Uh, it has a bell. It has a lid that uh, that you can uh, raise and open. It even has a lock that you can slide. And uh, the lid stays open. And here you've got the schematic of uh, of this device. Uh, here you've got the hook switch uh, found on on the side of the of the box uh, those are the line connectors uh, found uh, right uh, behind the hook switch this uh, this part is the generator and uh, there is also something like a transformer here this is the bell and uh, like you see here, you can see a few loose wires. This looks like uh, the microphone and uh, and the earphone uh, connector. And uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, try to repair and uh, restore this uh, this box so I can. Uh, I can ring it. Uh, one uh, one thing of note is that uh, in Europe, uh, at least in Poland, uh, there were two dominant uh, telephone systems. Uh, one of them was uh, local battery system, uh, and uh, this very telephone is uh, local battery one because uh, in local battery systems. Uh, Every one of the um, uh, telephones uh, had uh, its own uh, battery that powers the DO uh, circuit and uh, it has a generator that powers the, the bells in uh, the exchange office. Uh, back then um, exchange offices uh, were all manual you had uh, workers, mostly ladies, at uh, switchboards uh, listening in on um, incoming connections and uh, and patching the plug uh, on the switchboard uh, after they made uh, contact with uh, with uh, the subscriber who wants to make a call and, and uh, someone just uh, rings in and uh, a worker picks up and uh, and uh, the person uh, tells the worker where they would like to make a call and uh, and the worker patches them uh, over to another subscriber now it is all automatic and uh, it has been automatic for decades uh, with the introduction of uh, automatic exchanges um, Another system became popular, the central battery system, where where you had uh, a phone line uh, that uh, was uh, polarized with uh, with something like 48 or 60 volts uh, DC after you pick up the phone and. Uh, and um, this DC voltage uh, provided the bias voltage uh, for the microphone because uh, because the type of microphones used in telephones was mostly carbon microphone with uh, with small particles of uh, carbon compressing and expanding um, after it uh, it was uh, excited by the mechanical wave uh, of the sound uh, of you speaking to the microphone can generate uh, voltage um, 
it needs uh, external voltage uh, put across the microphone and then uh, the current through the microphone uh, changes with the with the sound wave this current flows through the earphone uh, through the speaker possibly with some uh, amplifiers uh, along the way if uh, if we have a long distance connection and yes that's uh, that's how telephones uh, worked for decades so without further ado, time to take a closer look at this uh, this beautiful antique telephone and uh, try to get it up and running again. Add the bench again with uh, the lovely old uh, antique telephone that uh, needs some love and uh, taking care of uh, of the loose wires hanging here we'll try to get it up and running again or get it up and ringing i need something to support the telephone so that it doesn't uh, fall down on me. All this while making it uh, visible all the things that uh, I'll be doing here. Gotta identify those wires. So fortunately there's the schematic uh, right here and uh, we can see Three connections uh, on uh, the generator. One, uh, two, and five. And uh, the two is uh, connected to a contact uh, that uh, disconnects when you turn the handle of the inductor. And uh, I guess that uh, this would be this contact that would go to 2 and uh, the other one is 1 and 5 uh, 1 should go to LA LA would be the first contact uh, on the terminal block on the side of the telephone And we have uh, the swear identified. This means that uh, that would be this contact because uh, it's not connected with the with the switch like this one is. Uh, so that's where the winding of the generator would uh, would connect to. It's also connected with the crank. And uh, if you look here, all the assembly it looks like it looks like the ground. Uh, and uh, now we just need to strip the wire and. Uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's insulated with uh, cotton, very old style. That's uh, this is where it would uh, attach all those uh, contacts. I can uh, unscrew. I could if uh, if the bolts weren't uh, that tight. It needs some warmth and love. But it's gonna take a lot of heat because uh, 
the large uh, metal parts are gonna suck uh, the heat away from uh, the soldering iron. Let's turn up the soldering station to the max and try to apply some more heat. I can see it's uh, locally melting. It doesn't really affect the full reflow of the solder. Fortunately, I don't have to be afraid about uh, overheating any parts here, like uh, like it can happen with uh, electronics. It's all very durable, and um, I don't really have to be afraid of that. Taking the tweezers uh, in order to remove the parts of the wire that uh, stick to to the lugs and now I can Solder it back in the in the position. I like to wrap the the wire around the lug uh, when I do the old style old style assembly. Not the printed circuit uh, board, but uh, but the old uh, tube amps and that kind of technology. The the point to point. Uh, I had it at the. Uh, end of my tongue point to point wiring I love the style of uh, electronic assembly I really should have a film extractor around uh, my workbench but uh, but here let's, uh, let's call it as a field uh, lab uh, and here I don't have one I, uh, I have one in Gdańsk uh, I made one for that kind of work but uh, but here I don't have one wrap it around with some tweezers And now I should be able to ring the bell. Of course, if uh, everything goes okay, uh, I might as well check the bell for open circuit. And it's like uh, 300 ohms, if you take a look at the multimeter right beside the work area. No open circuit for us, and uh, this is a good sign, because uh, as long as the bell is not uh, mechanically damaged, uh, it should work. In order to make the bell work, uh, we have to connect it with the generator. 
and uh, that means that, uh, that we should uh, connect the LA with uh, with W1 and uh, W2 or with uh, or the W1 and W2 should stay connected together and they uh, they are I should uh, have a contact uh, when the um, when the earphone is uh, on hook and pulls it down. I should uh, have contact uh, between uh, those two, between uh, seven and five, between W one W two and uh, the generator and uh, let's now see if uh, if that's the the case i'm uh, i'm uh, seeing a loose contact on w2 on the terminal strip this shall now be yeah, combobulated W1, W2 uh. and uh, LA it should work Seeing uh, anything here, let's check again and see if it was not a fluke. <laughs> no, it's not a fluke, it's X stack, not a fluke. I do have a connection between the contacts on the on the strip and uh, and the bell terminals here and uh, I should have a broken connection between uh, W1 W2 and the generator now and the connection should become uh, made uh, after I pull it down and uh, this is what's happening having the connection on the contact like I should it's uh, pretty intermittent If I pull it counterclockwise, it the connection breaks and um, the generator can uh, provide power. But 
but I can't hear the bell ring. Maybe there's some problem with the power itself. I do have uh, another bear from the 1960s or 70s that I could use for testing this. Uh, whether it's uh, the problem with uh, the bow itself or, or with the telephone circuit. Because I'd like to make the bow in this telephone operational. Disconnecting the bow on one end and uh, connecting a test bell Better screwdriver should do the job just fine. Keep the wire away. The other end of the bell goes here. It's a little bit tricky to do. Wizards to the rescue. And now it is time to test the bow. If it rings the bow. I now should be able to hear it, but I don't, I can't. Interesting. In order to check whether the bell <laughs> works at all, you can connect it with uh, W1 and W2. Or I, I was wrong uh, with uh, L1 and uh, L2. And uh, regardless of the hook's position, it should uh, it should ring uh, when you turn the handle and there you 
go. By the way, the inductor on uh, on the telephone could use some lubrication because uh, it's uh, it's pretty hard to turn. That's uh, that's also what I want to to do. And uh, I might, uh, when I take it out, uh, I also might uh, test it uh, out of the circuit. Uh, let's get a longer screwdriver that might be better at doing this job. No, it won't because uh, because uh, it's too thick uh, the slot. Uh, I need to use this one. It's still to fake. Let me get another one. This should be thin enough. Still not that. Damn it, come on! Looks like we are having the thinnest screwdriver contest uh, and uh, this one Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Disconnecting the generator. There's also a bolt on the side of uh, of the crank uh, here that uh, we have to remove in order to take the crank off. This is gonna be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Surprisingly easy. Wondering if uh, if there's also a detachable generator. Hmm. The bolts might be sealed with uh, with wax here, but uh, that might be pretty easy to to find and uh, and disconnect there's one here and uh, another one here and I'm expecting the third one somewhere around here there might be four of them because one is here that uh, Expecting to see symmetrical patterns. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm now pretty certain that uh, I found all of them. This wax was uh, added here probably as uh, the insulation because uh, the generator itself is uh, at the potential of uh, of the L1 point and now we can uh, take the whole generator out let's hold it uh, with my hand uh, 
so that it doesn't fall down. And, uh, and now we can take it out. And uh, if you take a, we can put it away, the foam. If you take a closer look, it has uh, U-shaped uh, magnets uh, and uh, and the armature is uh, the armature is on the rotor, and uh, the magnets uh, form the stutter of the of the generator. We might uh, start by removing the magnets. The magnetic field is uh, pretty weak because uh, this is uh, this is not neodymium. It's uh, it's an uh, old uh, ferromagnetic uh, alloy. Might not even be al nickel. This one uh, goes off uh, pretty hard and. Uh, And now we've got uh, some better access to the whole assembly and uh, here we can uh, see a, a board that uh, blocks the, the movement of, uh, of this ring and uh, this, is might, uh, this might be where it's binding after I Take it off. I also need to remove this bolt. Because it will block the movement of, uh, of the shaft and I need to remove the shaft altogether in order to clean and uh, lubricate the mechanism. This might uh, actually have a thread that goes into the shaft itself. No, it doesn't, but... But yeah. I should be able to rotate it on the on the shaft. Might use uh, pliers for this for this purpose, but uh, doesn't seem to be rotating. I also might uh, take this. Uh, the cog off uh, by removing this uh, this little bolt and bringing it up if I can. That's how I'd like to see if. Uh, if the resistance comes uh, from the armature or from uh, from the shaft here, I really could use some WD-40.
some WD-40 or a heat gun because uh, that's how I release the sized parts Use the force? Nah, I'm not Luke Skywalker. I'm not Luke Skywalker. By the way, the the part that uh, releases this contact, uh, it's uh, it's done uh, this way because uh, the shaft should move uh, sideways, and uh, whenever it uh, it is turned uh, in this direction it should uh, move backwards from here and uh, it's pretty free to move I should be able to remove it all together and uh, put some oil in it and uh, this pretty much answers my question about uh, whether the resistance uh, comes from uh, the shaft or something else. It's not the shaft, it must be somewhere in here. And uh, this ring is uh, actually attached to this tube. I might uh, unscrew the cog, uh, leaving the the hub with the tube. And then I will be able to see whether the resistance uh, comes from the armature or, or from this joint. screw is coming into way here oh it went all the way into the into the shaft which means that uh, now I should be able to remove the the cog of uh, of the armature and the armature should it could use some less resistance uh, rotating here it is uh, pretty free to move and uh, and my I might as well put this back together some oil will definitely help it But uh, I'd like to take off this uh, large cog uh, in order to reach into into this part and uh, take the armature out of uh, of the whole assembly.
comes apart very nicely and the armature is out and uh, I can uh, clean it I use some uh, isopropyl alcohol for that IPA not the sort of IPA that you drink unless you drink isopropyl alcohol it shall now be cleaned and uh, if you take a closer look uh, this is uh, this is like uh, tar it was uh, impregnated uh, with uh, with tar so simple thing of beauty dry forever Look like, uh, look how uh, the surface was was mirrored, how it was machined. Very nice. Might take a piece of metal to remove the the residue here. I use some lead and that should take a uh, nice care of uh, cleaning it without uh, without scratching. Cleaning the inside uh, surface of the hole it should be pretty nice now even without lubrication it turns uh, much uh, much better much more freely and uh, I also want to do the same on the opposite side of the generator. I'll take uh, one of the plates out and uh, and then I'll clean the hole. By the way, one of the sides of uh, the armature is uh, connected to to this and uh, the other one is connected to the other side of the shaft which means that uh, the shaft uh, might actually not have contact with uh, Now it's a single piece of metal. I'm seeing two hundred ohm. sure where the other side connects oh this is a very elegant solution because uh, 
This is not the same uh, piece of metal as the main shaft. Uh, it is uh, insulated and connected with uh, with this uh, with uh, with this contact. This is uh, connected with this, and uh, this is the opposite uh, pole of the coil. It's very nice. Make those contacts uh, a little bit tighter. And I'm getting like uh, 212 uh, ohms, which is pretty nice. Removing this contact. Uh, This is uh, this is one uh, side of the armature. It's uh, insulated from uh, from the main body of the generator, and uh, again I will clean the hole from the inside and uh, clean the brass surfaces. That about should do it. And again the piece of lead to clean this gunk. While we are here, I can also clean the rest and and the other one as well. And it is now time to put the generator back together and uh, in order to do that uh, I will lubricate uh, the, all the surfaces uh, or the interfaces between the moving and uh, fixed parts with some, some light uh, machine oil. And uh, this should get the generator going for the years to come. It is now becoming the generator again. A dab of uh, oil on. on this surface just a teeny tiny bit of oil because uh, you don't need that much this should normally be enough and uh, and then some oil in here and it is now time to Connect that back together.
make sure that uh, the parts and the surfaces uh, fit uh, correctly. Check for short circuit between the main body of the generator and uh, and the armature. Around 200 ohms, with uh, which is uh, right what we needed, and it now turns freely. See, thing of beauty and joy forever. Now it is time to clean this little cog. Do it uh, with lead and uh, with uh, isopropyl alcohol. And uh, be sure not to push it uh, too far into into the shaft because uh, otherwise the cog itself will be binding against uh, the generator body it is uh, it should be limited uh, with the distance uh, at which uh, you screw the hole because it goes into the shaft screwing, screwing, screwing screwing, screwing, screwing beauty now it is time to clean the inside surface of uh, of this uh, this bearing I won't be taking it off and uh, and cleaning the interface between the bearing and uh, and the machines the generator's body it's uh, it's pretty free to rotate uh, Ice proper alcohol again. And the opposite side. That should clean the ugly residue it is now time to reattach uh, the contacts I might also clean it it never harms to do it some isopropyl alcohol and uh, the ground contact here as well and uh, this is where it goes back from on the generator Yeah, 
attaching the large cog. Three cone headed screws. Tightening. And now it is time for the shaft. First I want to clean it and then I will put it back in and uh, lubricate it. This interface and uh, some oil on this interface. And it goes in uh, very nicely. And uh, this is uh, where the first the last screw goes in and uh, I must have it uh, lying somewhere around here. But see how, uh, how free it is now to move and uh, it's a completely different uh, story than, than what it was. The first screw was uh, caught by the magnet and it goes back here. It goes uh, back here and uh, screw it back in all the way. And it will now be the time to recombobulate the magnets. They are pretty weak. And I have to align them so that uh, the polarity it's in contact, in concert with each other. We have the North Pole marking on each side of the magnet. And uh, that's what I will use for reattaching them. Putting it back on the generator. A combobulation in progress. North Pole. North Pole. <laughs> I'm joking that I'm a North Pole because I live in Gdańsk. <laughs> and uh, those who live in uh, Krakow or Zakopane would be South Poles. And uh, it is time to align them uh, 
so that uh, the whole thing looks nice and properly assembled. Tighten those those bolts uh, that uh, keep the magnets in place. They should be spaced uh, a little bit uh, further because uh, the sides of the generator have uh, slots that uh, interface with the magnets and. Uh, The, the magnets uh, from the from the magnetic circuit with uh, with those uh, steel parts with uh, round cutouts uh, between which uh, the rotor turns and. Uh, Now it is time to tighten those screws as far as I can and, and yes, that would be the generator put back together and it's, uh, it's so beautiful now, it turns uh, really fine. And uh, it is now time to reattach the contact string. It's uh, So this is how it is. If you if you turn it, uh, then you will clearly see that uh, that the shaft is uh, moving back uh, because this is slanted and and uh, and yes, and here you you can see that. Uh, it makes contact and uh, that's how I made it wrong. I made a mistake uh, because I have to put the spring on the opposite side. You can always learn something new. And, uh, and yes, when, uh, when turning the crank, uh, you have to um, Put the contact uh, back from from moving. Push it and uh, and then we'll then it will break. And now we can uh, test the generator together with the with the bell connecting it to the pole and uh, and to the ground. And see if, or if it gives us the power. Yeah, 
happens. The ground connection is here. And the crank Did it break? Beauty! Enjoy forever! Beauty, enjoy forever! Raise the bell. And it will be now time to put it back into the telephone. But uh, first I would like to see if, uh, if I can uh, make the original telephone bell ring with uh, with the generator alone it's gonna be a little bit tricky and I need to use some cables by the way those uh, telephone bells, uh, they run on uh, 15 or 25 hertz uh, alternating current. Uh, if you connect the DC across, uh, across the bell, the only thing that you'll get is, uh, is just a single ding and, uh, and then nothing because uh, because the anchor of uh, of the electromagnet uh, it uh, alternates uh, between the the coils and uh, in order for that to work uh, the the coils uh, have to be powered uh, interchangeably from an uh, AC supply the the current has to flow both sides rather than just one and uh, doing some doing some uh, experiment uh, on 
on this generator in the name of science in the name of science and technology the generator I might as well put it here connect uh, one cable with with one end of the bow and uh, the other cable with another end Try to make it rain, make it rain. I think I heard it. Might as well solder the, the wires. It's only temporary and uh, I'll disconnect them after I'm done with this bow and by soldering I ensure that uh, I have uh, proper contact uh, it's, uh, that it's not the problem with lack of contact but uh, something else That should be pretty nice. Should be pretty nice, but I can't really see the bell ring. And looking at the multimeter from the center of the barrel to the to the sides hundred twelve and hundred and eight that means that uh, both of them have contact Maybe there's some mechanical problem between the the bow. Okay. It goes one way and uh, and not the other. Oh, I had a few. Heard it a few times.
Baron ASMR. Just hear the bell ring. It is so pleasant. Now that uh, I'm uh, having the telephone partially disassembled, I might as well remove the bell and uh, do some uh, recombobulation of the bell itself. Because uh, all it takes now is uh, removing the coils. Removing the coils, there's a lot of dirt going on between the parts of the bell. But I had to remove the coil in order to gain access to those screws. Remove it all together. I think the ball at the end of of the shaft uh, blocks the movement. I could now detach uh, this pivot, uh, loosen the lock nut and uh, and unscrew the, the bolt here, which should uh, free the the moving part. Uh, I should be able to remove it all together now. And just see how much uh, dust and other shit has gathered inside here. Let's remove all those screws because uh, they are essential. It is now time to use some compressed air. Turn on the compressor and uh, see.
seem how much dust has gathered inside the telephone. And in here, and uh, it's no surprise that uh, the bell couldn't move anymore. There's a board that the uh, the pivot assembly. I'll take it uh, outside as well to have a better access for cleaning. This uh, I will have to clean with compressor. Some precision mechanics here. Air gun. I don't really need uh, much pressure. The less, the better. Takes nice care of uh, all the dust. And I can now start putting the whole thing back together. the pivot assembly and the moving anchor this is a magnet it, uh, it uh, draws the steel slightly and uh, before uh, reattaching it uh, to its pivots by the way uh, I need some light oil on on the pivot before uh, reattaching I I can uh, put this back together just a teeny tiny bit of machine oil that's all it needs, that's all it needs, and, uh, and then we'll have to calibrate this mechanism. The cone head uh, screw goes back in, and the other one as well. Put the anchor in the pivots.
Time to put the coil assembly in. Might also clean them with the iron. Now let's see if it... See? Thing of beauty. Joy forever. Rings the bell for me. Recombobulation time. Starting with the bow and then moving on to the generator, putting it back on together. Where did I have those tweezers? Here they are. the generator looks like I put the magnets in backwards because uh, I should be able to insert the generator like this, and those magnets uh, were on the bottom side of the generator. You always make mistakes. So, it's only a matter of uh, loosening the screws and putting those magnets uh, around uh, not as uh, easy as I thought 
but I'm slowly getting there. Adjustment time. And it now should go back into the telephone case. Turning it backwards and Just screws. Uh, one is in and Tighten them. And back here it goes. Keep it in the upright position. And uh, the meter, and let's check contacts. LA is goes to this one, that is the ground, it goes uh, here. The cold joint and I were connected. And now some solder fell down into the generator.
Just a teeny tiny bit. The current school. That this is the one. The one that goes to the LB and the capacitor is this one and then there's the third one here the, that goes to the second contact uh, The last contact is here and uh, this is the contact number 5 and by the logic of elimination it goes to the hook switch And now we can test whether this little repair works. Is there nothing? W1, W2 goes to 5, goes through the bell. The bell goes to LB. And uh, LB should be connected with LA in order to make the bell ring on the the local that's uh, that's why I will need a piece of wire to short the line uh, 
after the line is shorted so I should be able to crank it and uh, hear the bow it's very temporary but uh, when I Still nothing. Wonder why. Connected those together. Six, uh, so I've got the bar connection in place. The right end of the bow goes to the line. The left end of the bow goes to the W contacts. It goes through the hook switch and uh, and it should uh, go to the contact on the generator. I can clearly hear the hook switch action. And with, uh, with the other bow it should work, because I tested it and it did work.
so the problem was with the contact number two. generator not uh, breaking when it should break but if I uh, press the crank uh, against uh, the, the box I should uh, be able to Hear the bell. Which means that uh, this contact might have a short circuit. And it might not even be dependent on If I put some insulating material, even uh, regular paper, between the contact and, and the moving one, I should be able to crank the... I hear it rain! Tadam! I've got a nice Bringing box that uh, 
works mostly in the upright position unless the, the paper slid out and it did <laughs> And yeah, that would be almost two hours of telephone fun with Kevin. Carry on doing the fantastic job. Uh, together in series <laughs> curiosity cured the cat but satisfaction brought it back to the loving memory of Erwin Schrödinger The voltage is not enough to make them work uh, when connected in series. And that's why I should uh, try a way of doing a parallel collection. And uh, it should be possible if I connect it with uh, LA and uh, LB connected together and uh, W1, W2 So get the LA and uh, LB together And uh, W1 goes to the other end of the bell and uh, now I should uh, make them ring uh, when, when the phone is on hook.
there's not enough power to make this one ring. Not when uh, two of them are wired. And if I disconnect one end of the line, the other hypothesis is that uh, this bell got uh, an open circuit through my experiments. We're having it on hook. It's either one or the other. Anyway, it's still nice to have a ring in box. And uh, might also clean the wood surface under the under the bow make it nicer
and that has been uh, two hours of me tinkering with uh, this antique telephone.